What went wrong with Starfield? Except everything, obviously. Now that I've covered um, what Starfield is, it's pretty much a glorified looter shooter with RPG elements. Uh, not. I don't know if I would call it a shooter, honestly. Let's face it. How many of you have played like five to ten hours of Starfield and have probably shot less than 20, 30 things? That's not a lot. That's very, very not a lot for a shooter. And the RPG elements, well, they're just bad. Done very well at all. Um, what should it have been? What should Starfield have been? Well, because of the stable that it comes out of, it should have been the next Skyrim, Skyrim in space. It was kind True. of touted as that. All the way through it was. They, they couldn't stop telling us that they were the people that made Star Skyrim and uh, Fallout. So, yeah... It's like, oh, this is the first new world we've made in 25 years. It's like, okay, so they're, they're making a whole new thing now. It's going to be space. Well, I'm well on board for that. I love me space games. You know, immersion True. is important in a, in a role-playing game. It's very important in a role-playing game. More so than any other genre of game. You've got to be immersed. How do you get immersed? Well, you have to believe you are in that game. You are that person. You are role-playing. Or do you just have to have fun, honestly, in my opinion. It doesn't have to be that deep, you know? But yeah, it, it would be nice to have some immersion. And, well, I think Bethesda honestly tried. And by tried, I mean they, you know, made it that you have to equip your space suit three parts, otherwise you die out in space. Which could have been automatic and, you know, way better than immersion, honestly that person so your environment has to be believable you have to kind of be able to get into it and starfield did a great job of stopping that happening and and the reason for that is <laughs> i believe because the engine they've used is it's not meant for this kind of stuff you can't do they've tried to the engine is 30 years old at this point it's not meant to do anything honestly at this point it it shouldn't do anything and guess what guess what Elder Scrolls 6 is gonna be on the same bad boy as this thing right here. It's gonna be great. It kind of um, put a round peg in a square hole with this engine and, and they've ended up in it with a mess. So, what should Starfield have been? Well, as you go to a spaceship, you should just walk no into it sky. and then take off yourself. How hard is it? How hard is it to sit down in a spaceship now in 2023 why are you thrust? Well, to be uh, fair, I actually have a theory about it, and I think they didn't do it because Xbox most likely had limitations. Because when you actually get into the spaceship and you press the X to wait, is it X? I don't even remember. Even though I played the game yesterday, you you press the uh, get off planet button. Sometimes, for a brief second, you actually see the space flight controls. While before the animation starts, which means most likely at some point they at least entertain the idea that you can't actually obviously fly around places because let's be real obviously, everyone at Bethesda understood that wait a minute, flying your spaceship wherever you want, landing it wherever you want sounds good, and people would probably like that. But for some reason, they literally scrapped the idea. Most likely Xbox limitations, because consoles are trash. And just go up with vertical, then as you get off the ground, just start tilting back, retracting your landing gear, and then thrusting out at a nice 45 degree angle, maybe, or whatever you want, through the atmosphere, and then into space. Then when you get into space... Set your nav computer, jump to where you're going. That should require a, um, a hyperspace screen, uh, which will be a loading screen. Get to the system you want, fly around, look at a planet, say, all right, I'm going to go down to that planet. So you're kind of jumping down towards that planet surface, going really fast, and then you break through the atmosphere, set your scanners on, scan around the planet surface. Okay, let me explain. That is way too much. Let's be real. Bethesda is the only gaming company... Literally, e e even double A and single A gaming companies and any indie companies have figured out the marvelous secret jutsu known as load things when you get near them, not actually, you know, ha have loading screens everywhere. Bethesda, oh no, 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 SSDs, what's that, a new type of tortilla? Yeah, yeah. 
any signals you pick up just fly around go a bit closer get a bit lower have a bit of a look out your window and see well that looks decent what is that down there that looks like a cave that looks like a building i'm going to just sit down here and i'm going to have a look and then you just land and then as you land you just actually get out of your chair walk to the back of your spaceship open the door and walk through the fucking door no loading just walk through the door and you're on that planet would surface, be good and you're wandering around and you've just achieved something amazing you have literally done proper space flight in a role-playing game it feels good because i've done it in no man's sky it's a truly epic magical feeling when you do that you feel like you literally piloted that ship same in elite when you dock at that station you've just traveled across the universe yep, seamlessly that's cool. apart from the hyperspace jump and you get there and you dock in there you land in that landing bay and you're there it's like wow that was awesome in this you literally get to your spaceship walk to the door loading screen get in your spaceship walk to your seat cutscene press the to travel from a planet to planet is three loading screens by the way for well actually two but it sometimes can be three if you're doing it from the ship on the planet you are it's like this you travel to a planet you you it's literally a loading screen you travel to the planet and after when you're at the planet you do nothing there's there's nothing to do but press the map which by the way takes like two seconds to open for some stupid reason there's literally a mod that makes it instant it's the it's the Diablo 4 problem of oh oh people are not gonna get tired of this thing uh, being happening like 50 times every every five minutes and taking two seconds no 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 let's not make it instant let's make it a cool animation it's so stupid it's so stupid and then when you're at your new planet that you just flew off to there's nothing to do so you press the map again navigate the map and then land again which is another which is a literal another loading screen and then guess what you're in the ship then you need to exit the ship which is guess what guess what another loading screen and then you need to go to the well place that you want to be in and it depends if that's an actual big city or if that's a you know cave or whatever but if it's a city then you get out of your spaceship, literally run for one minute in a straight line, and guess what? Another loading screen, because you need to load into the city. It is what it is. It is what it is. The space part to take off, cutscene. Get into space, plot your course, loading screen. Get to the planet you want to be, click to land, cutscene. Oh. <laughs> Land in your spaceship. Want to be out of your chair? Cutscene. Walk to the back of your spaceship. Oh, he's talking about cutscenes. Yeah. Get on the chair. Cutscene. Get out of the chair. Cutscene. He's talking about this chair right here. <laughs> Want to get out? Loading screen. Who's going to do that? I'll tell you who. No f***er. Because you yeah. can press one button and just instantly teleport there. But what does that do? That cuts out the whole space. Traveler, you're never going to get attacked. I've played this game now for over 20 hours. I've you had don't three space battles. You, you don't want to be attacked. That's the thing. The space battles are easily the worst part of the game. Three in 20 f***ing hours. And you know why? Because I'm not going through all of that cutscene bullshit. I'm just pressing one button to teleport to where I want to be. And it just totally cuts out space travel. So I'm never going to get attacked by pirates. Obviously, some missions will have me attacked by pirates so that will happen then but generally speaking i'm not in a space game i'm playing fucking beam me up scotty that's what i'm doing i'm Pretty a beam much. me up scotty looter shooter that's what i'm doing in Star by the way by the way by the way you see you see this he's going back to the main constellation base it's a loading screen to get to the plan and guess what this is a loading screen like there are some people who have not played this game I don't understand one thing. That they, they, there's so much of these bad things about Starfield. And the thing is, in other games, you easily can just, you know, withstand the bad things. Like, Baldur's Gate is not perfect. There's a couple of bad things about it, right, that people don't like. But the thing is, they encountered that bad thing, like, once every three hours. 
But Starfield has so many bad things that are constantly, constantly, constantly happening to you that it just ruins it. That That's the reality. It's just... Starfield has so many bad, small things happening to you with literally seconds apart, constantly, never-endingly, that it just destroys the experience. And that's a f***ing disgrace, considering this was sold on the back of Skyrim, Fallout, from- Also, for anyone who wants to fucking comment the dumbest comment imaginable, saying, Well, how about you buy a better PC? There's literally not a single PC fast enough, good enough, in the goddamn universe. You would literally have to uh, play Skyrim on a supercomputer. For this thing to actually, you know, bypass loading screens at a decent timing. And let's be real. Most people don't have a high-end tier PC. And most people are definitely not gonna waste their money on a high-end tier PC just to play Starfield. To just buy it for one stupid game that's trash. And Xbox obviously cannot be improved because it's garbage. So is PlayStation, but you can't even play Starfield on a PlayStation, but you know, that's fine. Bethesda, we were expecting an immersive RPG because we know that there's engines out there and we know that there's games out there that can do this. And we thought that Bethesda being one of the biggest studios in the world would do it and pull it off. And they haven't. It's smoke and mirrors. The whole thing's smoke and mirrors. The RPG side of things, you have all these companions who constantly talk over each other when they're in the same room. The money you sent home? Well, magical. it means a lot for, to both of us. I must admit. If you want to go and talk to somebody, it might be a mission quest to talk to one of them. They might be having a conversation with one of the others. So you stand there. I literally waited two or three minutes while one guy talked to his ex about how their relationship broke up. Imagine that. I walk into one Imagine caring about this guy. But yeah, and that's also the start of Starfield also, if you did not know. Uh, the first section is you just you just listening to a bunch of NPCs talk about spacesuits and being a dusty and all that good jazz. Oh, the life. Blah, blah, blah. It's boring. It's two minutes of nothing. It's two minutes of fluff that doesn't even matter. Then it's an elevator ride that also takes two minutes. Th then you need to go to the artifact chamber, which takes more than two minutes. It takes like five minutes of nothing happening. Like, the first ten minutes of Starfield at the bare, 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 bare minimum is nothing happening. It's just you standing and waiting until nothing happens. A room, and I can't talk to them because they're just having this intimate conversation about where they all went wrong. And also based Bethesda, old dude banging a young hottie. Nice. Standing there like a big fucking gooseberry. I mean, what? There's too many planets, there's too many companions, there's just way too much crammed into a bad engined game. And what you end up is, is nothing works properly. It's all just a mess. And that's what Starfield is. An absolute mess. They should have deleted yep. thousands of these planets. Myself, personally, I would have much preferred a more streamlined game with maybe 20 planets. You want a super hot take? I think Starfield would have been a successful game if it was just a reskin Fallout. On a single world, and guess, and your storyline is you, you have lived on a crashed ship for... 200 years and now the ship's overseer wants uh, something happens and you leave the ship and you're on a desolated nuclear apocalypse world and now you're exploring it. That would have been a 50 times more successful game than uh, uh, Starfield. It, it, we would call it Fallout Field. No, Fall Field. Yeah, Fall Field. 20 planets crafted with care, with lots of points of interest on them, with lots of things happening, with the planets that look actually alive and not some bad 1970s Star Trek f***ing place. You know, I was expecting to see the f***ing Gorn, a man in a suit, throwing f***ing polystyrene rock. By the way, yeah, I haven't talked about it, but all, all the cities look trash. 
It's like, oh boy, I wonder if I'm gonna go to the city where gods have 350 credits in the pocket or 120 credits in the pocket because Mars is poor. Oh boy, I wonder how this absolutely looking like shit place is gonna look compared to the other absolutely looking like shit place. It's not even funny. That is on some of these places that just don't look real, they're like studio sets. Remember in Morrowind, remember in Oblivion, remember, remember in Skyrim, you go into these caves and you're in there for hours. Some of them, it's just like, what is all this? This is, I've just discovered this, I've just came across all this. I wasn't told to come here, I just went <laughs> in. And... <laughs> That's classic jetpacking for you, by the way. He thought he can jetpack onto the rock, but the planet's gravity is different than what he expected, so he planted into the rock and now he wasted seconds uh, going to the location. By the way, while running to obviously this sp uh, bot right here, guess what he's gonna encounter? Nothing. Literally, nothing. I just discovered this. And if he encounters something, it's gonna be annoying. It oozed the atmosphere. Seamless. Remember Kingdom Come Deliverance just doing the quests in there? Some of them were just what some people would call boring. I thought they were great. Being on guard duty in that fort, being shown the ropes off a guard. It was a 20 minute walk around the fort. He was saying, This is where you gotta watch here. This tower here. It's all at night with under torchlight. It was just highly immersive. You were, you were that character. You got into that character. I didn't get any of that in Starfield because you can't, because it doesn't have that. Starfield is just a looter shooter with RPG elements. That's all it is. Sure, you can customize your ship. You can do all of that. You can upgrade everything. Yourself, your perk system, your weapons, your ship. Yeah, but it doesn't everything matter. Everything can be upgraded. But why? Why would you? Do you know what? After three hours of playing it, I knew the game sucked. Because it wasn't what I was after. Yep. I wanted an RPG. I didn't want a fucking first person looter shooter. I came here for an RPG and I got a first person looter shooter with teleport and space elements and watching Sarah being shot just just make just makes me happy. Absolute sketchy as fuck role playing game elements. Now, yes, you can have fun in this game. I've had fun in, in the lots of the, the places that I've been, the science labs, shooting people, grabbing loot, selling the loot, upgrading me stuff. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun getting new suits, helmets, weapons, jump packs. It's fun putting in perks to make them more effective. It's fun getting your little superpowers. Yes, the perks all are that's bad. fun. Relax. But when you want to play it as a role-playing game, it's not fun. Because the it's massively, massively disjointed. And Starfield should have been way better than this. It should have had great planets to explore. It should allow you to just fly around them planets in the atmosphere, scanning. It should make you feel like you are at one with your ship. It should have revolved around the ship. And what about landing on the planets and having some kind of like hover bike or something to just go around and scout out the planet? Too much How fun. easy would Too that be to fun. do? World of Warcraft, you know, 20 years ago, guys, I'll show you this. I'll speed this. There, there, there. The reason why they don't have things like hover bikes in the game is because then people would just understand very quickly how... Well, it would be just you getting from a loading screen to a different loading screen faster. This is what Bethesda does when they uh, when they want you to actually explore the planet. You see a hill and you're like thinking, what's behind this hill is going to be something fun? And you get over the hill and it's like, oh, oh, it's nothing. But there's another hill over there, but there's something cool there, chief. And you get over that hill and it's like, oh, what is here? And it's like, nothing. Not, nothing's there, obviously. But there's another hill right there. Third time is John, baby. You get over the hill and you're like, aha. It's nothing. It's nothing. But there's another hill. Yeah, you can't have this another hill illusion if, if you have a space bike. Also, the only decoration on planets is literally rocks. It literally is only rocks, by the way, if you pay attention. And, well, if, if you remove the rocks from the planet, the, well, the planets have no decorations anymore. So, that would kind of be bad, probably. So, you know, there's also that reason why it doesn't happen. So, so you can actually see it. They have a horse, and you can Always travel seamlessly, up, seamlessly through loads of different biomes that were crafted properly, with care. There's no loading screens, no cutscenes, it just f***ing works. You can just ride from one area to another, just seamlessly. You'll 
Okay, Undead Mage. At least he's a Horde player and Undead. Got 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 the uh, got the Onyxia buff. Uh huh. Let's see. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh huh. Has has the foods? Doesn't have any bandages. Has bandages on his hotbot in two locations. I don't even know, Chief. Honestly. Has mage armor and that mana shield, frost ward, fire ward. Okay, uh, don't know what's on his eight, honestly. Uh, his bindings look nonsensical, honestly, because all you should be all you should have bind is either fireball or frost bolt. Other than that, nothing makes sense. Oh, he's actually fire spec. Yeah, he has the what, what's this ability called? I forgot. Okay, I, I, I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. He's using this bar as utility. Smart, smart. I do the actual the same thing. He has a PvP trinket, which is fucking questionable. Why would you actually do PvP in Classic, you idiot? And then he has a bunch of macros. From one, one of those is Dance. Questionable. Six greater mana pots, that's nice. And, well, that's pretty much it. Eh. Not bad, not bad. Wait, he has... He has also Presence of my Oh, he has Presence of Mind for, uh, the Pyroblast. Yeah, makes sense. You see the biome gradually changing as the new one comes. It's... That was 20 years ago. Bethesda can't even let you go through the fucking door of a room without a fucking cutscene. Well, most of the time they can't. I mean, they can, obviously, there's a few doors you can do that, but do you know what? I genuinely True. can't remember walking to a new building, opening a door, and not getting a cutscene. And it just breaks the immersion, it breaks everything that you want in a game. And By the way, Bethesda knows that, because the very first city that you travel to, uh, in the first zone, all the shops are open. You can just go in them, and it's fine. But then you travel to a different district in the same city, and you can find more shops. And all of those shops are behind the loading screen. They're not open. You can't go into them. You need to load into them. And guess what? It's literally a room. It's literally a single room that you need to load into. It has no adjacent rooms, no nothing. But you still need to load in, in it. I don't. It, it makes no sense. This is why you need an SSD for it. This is why, because if you aren't using an SSD, my goodness, you'll be st staring at a blank screen more than you'll probably be staring at the game. It's so sad that this has been widely accepted as, as okay by it the hasn't. reviewers. And, and certainly by the- The reviewers have paid off, obviously. It, it's not really accepted. They just know they're not going to get Elder Scrolls 6 if they don't review this garbage good. Paying customers who are paying 85 pound for an RPG that's in this app. 85 pound is, I don't know how much in real money, maybe a couple of cents, I don't know, Britain's a shitty place. The loot sorry our state. I didn't want a loot shooter, but that's what I got. In Starfield, it could have been way, way more. Less companions, less planets, more detail, more immersion, better engine, no cutscenes, no loading screens. You do it yourself, you are the pilot, that's your ship, fly the fucking thing. My goodness, I can't believe I'm even having to say this. What Ball a shots. state. What an absolute state we're in with games. If this is the best from one of the biggest developers out there, f me. The future looks bleak, guys. It's a Bethesda game. You're supposed to rate it as a Bethesda game. You know, like a handicapped child or something. I'm going to end you. Classic Sarah. Now steal something and, and wait until she literally t uh, tells you to stop stealing in front of the guy you just stole from. <laughs> oh boy. Man, Starfield, what an experience. Worth the buy. Great channel, by the way. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and have a nice day. Bye bye.